Lana Lang was the female lead on Smallville for seven and a half seasons. She was Clark Kent's primary love interest and an integral character to the show and its mythology. She was also one of the most unfairly hated and misunderstood characters I have ever come across on any TV show. I have always wondered where this hatred of Lana sprang up from and found it to be quite frustrating because Lana was one of the strongest, most multifaceted characters on the show with one of the best character arcs. So today, let's take a look at Lana Lang's character arc throughout the seasons and explore why she doesn't deserve the hatred which has been thrown her way for so many years. Lana starts the series as the typical, and literal, girl next door to Clark Kent, who is shown to already carry a torch for her. She is popular and pretty, dates the jock quarterback, is voted homecoming queen and comes across as the perfect all-American girl. A lot of fans were turned off by this persona as it presented Lana as being too perfect to be relatable. However, it was soon revealed that this persona was actually a mask Lana crafted for herself in order to maintain some semblance of control over her life. Having lost her parents in the meteor shower which brought Clark to Smallville, Lana has molded her life according to what she believed they wanted, striving for perfection as a way to make them proud. In addition to this, it is shown that Lana became the face of the town's tragedy after a picture of her as a terrified child was used as the cover photo on a Time magazine article covering the media shower. Growing up with that sort of scrutiny on her forced Lana to wear a mask, knowing that the public was watching her every move and waiting to judge her. As she says to Clark, Remember when you said people keep their darkest secrets hidden? Mine's out there for all the world to see. Lana keeps her truest self hidden behind the veneer of perfection, and the first season of the show focuses on her discovering herself and what she truly wants outside of the expectations which have been placed upon her. She starts this journey by quitting the cheerleading squad and attempting to take on a part-time job. Despite her job being a disaster, she continues on her journey of self-actualization, aided by the discovery of the speech her mother made at her graduation, which expressed her desire to escape Smallville. This revelation is the first major turning point for Lana. Not only is she startled to discover that her mother wanted vastly different things than what Lana had been told she wanted, this is the first time that Lana discovers someone she cares about lying to her, as her Aunt Nell had kept this truth from her in order to shape a more idealistic view of Lana's parents in her mind. Honesty becomes a big sticking point for Lana over the series, as more and more people she loves continue to hide things from her, and the starting point is Nell's lie to her about her parents, which, when discovered, has a deep effect on her. As previously mentioned, she has molded her life according to what she believed they would have wanted, and the revelation that she has been striving towards a goal her parents, and in particular her mother, didn't actually want, allows Lana the first bit of freedom to discover who she actually is, and not who she believes her parents, and by extension other people, wanted her to be. The episode Nicodemus further explores Lana's emerging character, showing a side to her not previously seen. Even after her discovery about her mother's true desires, Lana remains a fairly introverted and docile character, still unsure of stepping outside of her comfort zone. Her growing relationship with Clark and new friendship with Chloe help to bring her out of her shell, but Nicodemus gives us the first glimpse of the darker Lana who will emerge in later seasons. Through Lana's transformation, the audience can see how she is often defined by others' perceptions of her as everyone becomes very uncomfortable with the sexier, more confident persona that emerges after she encounters the Nicodemus flower. This isn't you. Why? Because I'm not doing exactly as I'm told? Because I'm not sitting in a corner hiding in a book? For once, I'm not scared of life and no one can handle it because you all prefer the insecure little girl. A running theme with Lana is that she often feels that people expect her to be a certain way, and it is shown that when she fails at this, they become disappointed with her. This is especially true of Clark, who holds Lana up on a fairly high pedestal and finds it extremely difficult to deal when she falls off it. Nicodemus shows us a glimpse of this discomfort, which will be further explored down the track as Clark and Lana's relationship deepens. 
Lana's growth and exploration of self continues in season two, which is a season of change for her, delving into her background and exploring her fear of abandonment. Towards the end of season one, Lana convinces Lex Luthor to help her reopen the Talon Cafe, a place which was owned by her family and which holds great emotional value for her. She takes up management of the cafe and starts to gain more confidence within herself. This season sees Lana shedding her docile side, allowing the fierce, resilient part of her personality to break through, especially after a series of attacks from meteor-infected humans which target her. Fed up with constantly being the damsel whom Clark needs to save, Lana starts to train with Lex, building up her physical strength and even coming to Clark's rescue for a change. Far from being the damsel scrappy that much of the fandom make her out to be, Lana refuses to remain a victim, deciding not to remain defenseless and rely on Clark to save her and using her past experiences to fuel her rage, strength and conviction. Over the season, Lana experiences deep loss as her boyfriend Whitney is killed in combat overseas. While Lana had already begun to extract herself emotionally from the relationship, Whitney's death still hits her hard and fills her with guilt over breaking up with him via a video message. She carries this guilt for some time and it prevents her from following her heart and starting a relationship with Clark for much of the season. Her losses continue to pile up as her aunt Nell begins a new relationship and moves to Metropolis to start a new life. While it is Lana's choice to remain behind in Smallville, she is still hurt by Nell's decision to leave her and it reinforces her fear of losing those she loves. She starts to investigate her past and makes a life-changing discovery that her mother had an extramarital affair which resulted in Lana's conception. Longing for familial ties, Lana finds her biological father Henry and begins to form a relationship with him. Just as she and her father start to grow closer, her father's wife demands that Lana remove herself from their lives as she has grown jealous and resentful over Lana's relationship with Henry. Despite the fact that Henry is her only relative left in Smallville, Lana steps aside and encourages Henry to reconnect with his wife. Far from the selfish and self-centered character she is often made out to be, Lana shows great selflessness in giving up a chance at family and security in order to help someone else through their pain. You're my daughter, I just can't walk away from that. You're not. No, I'll always be here. But right now, I think Jennifer needs you more. Initially countering all this loss is Lana's relationship with Clark, which starts to deepen and develop into a romantic one over the course of season two. After several false starts and many secrets on Clark's side, he and Lana finally cement their relationship towards the end of the season, and it is easy to see how safe and secure it makes Lana feel, especially given the year of loss and change she has endured thus far. The audience can clearly see how deeply she and Clark care about one another and how naturally they fall into a romantic relationship. Unfortunately for Lana, this too is shattered when Clark leaves her at the end of the season. While we, the audience, know that Clark himself is suffering from loss and grief and the knowledge that he caused an accident which harmed his mother, Lana is not provided with this reason and instead watches the last person she loves right out of her life without explanation, cementing her fear of losing everyone she cares about and leaving her devastated. Clark's subsequent return from Metropolis at the start of season three disrupts Lana's routine, rhythm and emotions and she spends much of season three trying to break free of him. Initially attempting to repair their relationship and offering to wipe the slate clean, Lana is forced to deal with Clark's contradicting emotions as he continually rejects her while simultaneously making it clear that he still has feelings for her. The Smallville fandom has always been very harsh on Lana with regards to her relationship with Clark, but what we as an audience often fail to take into account is that Lana does not know what we do. Lana doesn't know that Clark was affected by red kryptonite and therefore not himself when he left, and she doesn't know that he hesitates to get close to her because of his secret and how it may endanger her. All Lana knows is that the guy she fell in love with, whom she found happiness with and felt secure and safe with, can't give her a straight answer and constantly hides secrets from her. 
Naturally, this takes a toll on her as she struggles to understand Clark's intentions and motivations. Season 3 is a very emotional and unstable season for Lana, as the after effects of her relationship with Clark start to weigh on her. After a stranger manages to manipulate his way into her life and almost kills her, Lana starts to think about leaving Smallville, recognizing not only how dangerous the town is for her, but how it does not hold much of a future for her anymore. Continuing with her journey of self-discovery, she enrolls in a student exchange program, hoping to start a new life in Paris where she can receive a fresh start and remove herself from all the painful memories. I'm sorry, Lana, I never meant to hurt you, but I promise I'm not going to leave this time. Maybe I am. You know what your dad said about looking back on his life and feeling as though he'd missed something? Clark, I have been so focused on you, waiting to see if we could ever get back together, that maybe I'm missing out on some opportunities. Yet, even as she prepares to leave, we see evidence that she would stay if Clark opened up to her and let her into his life. She hesitates to take this next step all the way to the moment when she leaves, and it is clear that part of her is using the exchange program as a way to escape Clark and the pain of being around him. While the first three seasons of the show focus on Lana's journey of self-discovery, the next three seasons pave the way to her journey into darkness as she undergoes a series of traumatic events and relationships. She starts season four seemingly stable in Paris, happy in a new relationship and thriving in her independence. She is driven back to Smallville after accidentally awakening the spirit of one of her ancestors, the powerful witch, Isabel Thoreau, who ends up possessing Lana several times throughout the season. Lana is a person who is very much about control, and losing it in such a way and to such a powerful being provides the first fracture to her psyche. This possession kickstarts her emotional trauma conga line, which continues over the season, as it's revealed that her boyfriend Jason is actually using her for her connection to Isabel, and a second meteor shower at the end of the season once again almost takes her life. Her discovery of an alien ship after the shower rocks Lana's world and makes her question everything she knows. The following season is extremely damaging to Lana. Her relationship with Clark becomes extremely detrimental to her, even though, as with season two, it starts out sweetly, with Clark newly human and therefore able to be open and honest with her. However, Clark's death and subsequent resurrection and regaining of his powers puts a serious strain on their relationship and on Lana as Clark starts to pull away from her in the aftermath. Trust and honesty once again become huge issues in their relationship and Lana's faith in Clark, and by extension everyone else, starts to fracture as she questions why the person she loves more than anything in the world refuses to trust her enough to be honest and communicate with her. The death of Jonathan Kent causes Clark to cut her off even further, and eventually their relationship dissolves, leaving Lana heartbroken once more. We see how far gone she is and how deep her abandonment issues have become in the episode Void in which it's revealed that Lana has become addicted to a drug which allows her to see visions of her parents. So broken down by her failed relationship with Clark and the trauma she has endured over the past several years, Lana finds comfort in the hallucinations of her family, revealing how she has developed something of a death wish. I'm sorry. I just, I wanted to see them so badly. I'm just so alone. Her broken vulnerability opens a window for Lex to swoop in and offer her the comfort and security she lost when her relationship with Clark ended, leading into the abusive relationship she suffers through during season six as Lex manipulates his way into her heart. Season six provides the true catalyst for Lana's turn down the dark side and her eventual desire for power. Between her abuse at Lex's hands and Clark's insistent presence in her life, this is the season that truly showcases Lana's resilience. Lex expertly uses Lana's desire for honesty and openness to manipulate her into believing that he can provide these things for her. He often gives her just enough information to make it look like he's being completely honest while hiding his more insidious schemes from her. As their relationship progresses, he drugs her in order to fake a pregnancy, violating Lana's body and taking away her agency. 
As the season wears on and Lana starts to discover Lex's dark side, we see her harden under the trauma, especially once the truth about the pregnancy is revealed and she discovers how Lex has robbed her of her agency. Being forced by Lionel Luther to marry a man she has come to fear and despise is the final straw for her, and she starts to devise a way in which to extract herself from the situation, a hardness and hatred settling in her heart as she strives to regain the power the Luthers stripped away from her. This is the turning point at which Lana sheds all pretense and lingering characteristics of the girl she was in high school and emerges as a darker, harder, and more self-serving character who indulges her taste for revenge and stands on her own. Unfortunately for Lana, it is at this point that she discovers that Clark is really not prepared to deal with this side of her. To Clark, Lana has always been the sweet, good girl next door, and having to face a darker Lana he neither knows nor identifies with has a profound effect on their relationship and starts to take its toll on Lana. Clark is unable to accept that Lana made her own choices and decisions and that she chose to go after Lex and pursue power and vengeance. Lana knew about the other entrance to those tunnels the whole time and it wasn't until she heard you were down there that she magically produced them. Lana was going to let Lex die down there. Clark's attitude and reaction to Lana was mirrored in the audience when the series first aired. Many fans were unable to accept a darker Lana, labeling her self-centered and hypocritical despite all the trauma Lex had put her through and the very valid reason she had in her pursuit of vengeance. Even though fans disliked the girl next door Lana, they disliked darker Lana infinitely more, and her final two seasons on the show were not well received. Lana spends much of season 7 trying to channel her trauma and rage into something productive. After initially pursuing vengeance against Lex and Lionel, she retreats and uses the millions she inherited from them to fund a charity designed to help people affected by the meteor showers. She moves into the Kent farm with Clark and tries her best to be what he needs, but something has broken and she starts to buckle under the weight of his expectations. When Bizarro Clark masquerades as the real Clark, Lana falls for him because the air of judgment and disappointment has finally lifted. She believes that Clark has finally accepted her, flaws and all, and it is devastating for both her and Clark when Bizarro is finally revealed. While Clark cannot fathom Lana falling for his evil doppelganger, Lana is forced to realize that Clark will never truly accept her. Do you have any idea how it feels to wake up every morning? knowing that you're going to fail in the eyes of the only person you've ever really loved. And you're the one who fell in love with Lex. And then fell for that killer. Leaving at the end of the season, Lana once again flees from Clark and his expectations of her, leaving to seek power so she can finally be Clark's equal. Season 7 made Lana feel inferior to Clark due to his disappointment in her dark side, and she believes that the only way she can be a truly good person and live up to his expectations is to find power that matches his. Many fans wish that Lana's journey had ended in season seven. However, her small arc in season eight was needed to truly wrap up her character and to let the audience see how far she had come. She seeks out a mentor who helps her to rid herself of her former personas, break her emotional ties to Clark, and finally emerge as her own person. We see her get her final vengeance on Lex and take back the power she has lacked for the previous three seasons as she steals a super-powered suit meant to heal Lex. Finally physically matching Clark in power, Lana reaches a place where she no longer feels inferior to or attached to Clark. When she returns to Smallville, her and Clark's brief romance is natural, deep, and finally equal because Lana has discovered herself and how strong she can be without Clark. We get a brief glimpse of this dynamic before she and Clark are forced into an impossible situation by Lex. The skin Lana's wearing is designed to absorb enough meteor rock that you'll never be able to go near her again. Once again, in defiance of the fandom's belief of her selfishness, Lana selflessly absorbs a mass amount of kryptonite-fueled energy ending any chance at happiness with her soulmate in order to save Metropolis. Lana makes the hard but right choice, and instead of allowing it to break her, 
she uses her pain to fuel her new mission in which she can help others and protect the helpless. Against all odds, Lana comes out on top and her journey completes with her in a position of power, independence and freedom. Her journey over the series is full of ups and downs and it shows the many facets and nuances to her characterization, displaying why she is someone to be respected and admired. Her fierceness, resilience, huge heart and yearning to always be better run counter to the fandom's hatred of her and hopefully, in the years to come, as more people discover the show, she will become more appreciated as fans recognize why she doesn't deserve the hatred that she has received for so long.